Hey everybody, Jake here for Extreme Terrain, and today I'm chatting with Brandon about his 2022 Jeep Gladiator Overland. Brandon, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. So to go over it for everybody, again, it's a 2022 Jeep Gladiator Overland. Brandon's got 17 by nine inch Mammoth General wheels in matte black. They have a negative six millimeter offset, making for a very aggressive stance. For tires, he's running the 35 by 12 and a half inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. And for suspension, he's got a Terraflex one and a half inch performance spacer leveling kit for the front. And in the back, he's got the Daystar three quarter inch rear coil spring spacers. Can you kind of tell me what was your inspiration for this setup? Sure, so I'll tell you first going into this build, one of my key things is I wanted to be budget friendly. So I wasn't trying to go over the top. I know a lot of guys love the lift kits and stuff. So I was looking something more in my price range, right? I did my research. Um, I watched tons of YouTube videos on people who had done similar stuff. And I, I knew I wanted to put on bigger tires, right? So I read online, right? And I found that the uh, one and a half inch TerraFlex leveling kit was perfect for adding 35s onto an overland. So I went with that. That, the next lead in was the three quarters Daystar backspacer, which um, fit perfect on the truck. It was easy to install. And then from there, adding the, the bigger tires was a no brainer. Um, that looks great, rides great. Um, in doing all this, I wanted to have a truck that I could use as a daily driver. I, I, I drive it to work every day um, and I wanted something that was off-road capable. And I'll say I've taken it off-road several times and the tires, it has no issue getting over obstacles. Um, it doesn't get bogged down. And so the 35s and the Nittos was perfect. And to get there again, I had to add the web link kits. Start with the wheels. So again, for wheels, you're running 17 by nine inch Mammoth Generals, and these are matte black. They have a negative six millimeter offset, and they would make for what we call a very aggressive stance because you've got quite a bit of poke out from the fenders. So what do you like about this wheel? What drew you to it? Personally, I love the look of the wheel. My approach was I wanted to stick with a theme, a color theme, and those wheels fit perfect. The black um, covers the entire hub, looks cool. It's got sort of that old school military look to it. I don't know. When I first saw them, my first go-to was like, that looks like a Humvee wheel. And so that was my, like, that's really cool. It looks aggressive. The fact that they poke out and gives it that really, really nice stance to me makes it look even cooler, so. Again, this is a very aggressive stance. Uh, what made you go with this width and offset? Was it specifically to fit the 35s or was there something else that drew you to it? What I found personally was I like the look of the, the, the greater poke. It just makes the tire look bigger. It makes the truck look bigger. For me, it's really about the aesthetics of it. And I haven't noticed any deductions in vehicle performance because of that. And I would imagine that those wider, you know, that wider offset helps with that, so. Let's move on to the tires. So again, for tires, you're running the 35 by 12 and a half inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Was there a specific reason that you picked the 35s? I debated between doing 33s and 35s, and um, ultimately what I decided was a 35 was gonna give me the greatest amount of clearance on an Overland without a lift. The 35 to me seemed like the farthest I could go without drastically impacting power um, or acceleration or anything like that. So if it would've been 37s, I would've put 37s on it. But 35 looks great um, and it definitely helps with clearance absolutely with clearance so that was my, my main is just make sure that if i'm off road that i'm not worried about scraping or anything like that so what was it that drew you to that specific brand and model of tire for me because i'm dailying this truck you know i wanted something that wasn't going to be really loud and uh you know doing my research and looking through and seeing what the Nitto offered, a lot of people had reported that it was a very quiet tire on the road. And I can report that that is true. It is a very quiet tire, but still gives you that all-terrain capability. What do you feel changed? Was there, I know you said that they're pretty quiet. Did you notice, is it a little bumpier? Does it ride or handle any differently versus stock? As far as, you know, difference in daily driving, another thing I noticed is because of the tire size, it does accelerate a little bit slower, but that's to be expected when you're adding weight to the vehicle. So um, it is a little bit slower and I, I do notice it's a little bit more sensitive on the steering, but I have no complaints. I mean, it, it drives pretty close to what it would stock. My plan to, to combat that power issue is I, I do want to re-gear it to get back to the, the stock power band, but it drives excellent and pretty close to what it did before, so. So you kind of just gave me the perfect segue because my next question was gonna be about speedometer error and if you notice any sluggishness with it. So you said that it was a little bit noticeably sluggish? It is a little bit slower to start. And um, so the, the Overland comes with the 373 gearing. So I will say with 35s and stock gearing, rarely do I hit eighth gear. Um, but my gas mileage actually isn't that bad. I'm still getting 20, 
I drive a lot of highway. Um, you know, the real, the real thing someone's going to notice if they go from that stock tire to a 35 is you're just going to be a little bit slower at the start, but it's a Jeep, right? I didn't buy it to, to race with. So it's not something I'm super concerned with. What gear ratio are you planning to go with? So I want to go with a four, five, six. Um, I've been flipping between a four, eight, eight, but I, you know, just decided four, five, six is going to be my perfect sweet spot. So I've got the parts. I just got to get somebody to put it on. So when you did the larger wheels and tires, was there a, any kind of speedometer or odometer error that you noticed? I actually went with a Taser Mini and had my speedometer recalibrated and minimal error, none that's, that's noticeable by uh, human eyes. So I hadn't noticed any with that recalibration. So again, for suspension, you've got the TerraFlex one and a half inch performance spacer leveling kit for the front. And in the back, you've got the Daystar three quarter inch coil spring spacers. Did you do the wheels and tires first or did you do the lift first? So I'll say I did them both at the same time, but I knew in order to fit the bigger tire, I had to lift the truck. So my first area of research in product selection was the TerraFlex lift. So that was the first thing that was installed on the truck, just to give me that little bit of flare spacing that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Was there a particular reason that you didn't go with a larger lift? You know, I knew if I wanted to take it off road, I didn't want to have steppers interfering with my clearance. So I knew right off the bat, okay, I'm gonna go with rock rails. Now I'm limiting myself to how many inches I can lift this thing if I know I don't want steppers, unless I go with some sort of automatic stepper that declines when I get out. But that was definitely um, a big factor in deciding what I wanted as far as lift. Did you have any fitment or rubbing issues with the wheels and tires and the lift as it is? Absolutely no, none. So it runs great at full steer. It's no rubbing at all. How do you like the way this whole thing looks with this setup as it sits? How do you like it? I absolutely love it. It looks so cool, so aggressive. Um, I get a lot of thumbs up. I get a lot of Jeep waves. To me, I love the, the, the military-esque look of the vehicle. I've always loved that about Jeeps and the, the wheel combo and, and the slight lift. Um, it's aggressive. It's got the aggressive stance. I love it. Knowing what you know now, uh, you know, having had the setup for a while, is there anything you do differently? I would have gotten things earlier. I think I spent a little bit too much time overthinking what I wanted. And in this case, you know, simple was the answer. I debated between, you know, kind of lift do I want? And it should have just gone with the first thing that I wanted, which was the TerraFlex and the, the wheels. One thing I would do differently, you know, just as a advisory thing for people who are trying to use the vehicle as a daily, you know, if you're going to put bigger tires on it, consider re-gearing sooner rather than later. So if you're going to do it, save up, do it all at once, and then you'll never even notice. So do you have any plans for future mods? Yes. So um, one thing I do want to add is uh, I do want to put a new bumper on it and I'm looking at, um, you know, possibly putting a winch on it, thinking about a, a, a bed rack as well. I think that's about it. All right, Brandon, thank you so much for talking about your Jeep. Uh, it looks great. I think it's a really cool build. Uh, I'm excited to see what you do with it next. So once again, everyone, just to go over Brandon's setup, he's driving a 2022 Jeep Gladiator Overland. His wheels are 17 by nine inch Mammoth Generals in matte black with a negative six millimeter offset, making for a very aggressive stance. For tires, he's running 35 by 12 and a half inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. And for suspension, he's got the TerraFlex one and a half inch performance spacer leveling kit for the front and the Daystar three quarter inch rear coil spring spacers. So Brandon, thank you again so much for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for watching. And remember for all things Gladiator, remember to keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.